In 2012, a group of young people from Kleti Kleti Foyer made a short film called Tak Polska. Their aim was to explore the rich Polish culture and presence within their town of Kleti. Thanks to generous European funding and help from many people, including local cultural expert Paolo Piana, at the end of 2013, we were able to take those young people, many of whom had never owned a passport or been on a plane, to the beautiful Polish city of Gdansk to explore Polish culture further. This is Tak Polska, part two. The city of Gdansk is located on the River Motlava, a river whose waters have helped shape the city's life and development for centuries. So naturally a river trip was first on the agenda. Gdansk was one of the few European cities to be completely destroyed during World War II. Although the most important town buildings have all been rebuilt, there is still much to be done, and we caught our first glimpses of the devastation along the riverbank. Gdansk is a free city, and as such the Middle Ages saw this waterway receive and welcome refugees and those fleeing religious persecution. Many people settled here from France, Holland and even Scotland. Today, the shipyards all along the river are servicing and repairing ships from across the world. We saw many international ships, including ones from Russia, China, Britain and Italy. The boat trip took us out to Vesterplatte, where the Motlava meets the Baltic Sea. Where are we now? We're in Westerplatte. Uh, can you tell us about the significance about this place that we're at? Right, okay. Well, Westerplatte was um, on the 1st of September 1939, just out here in the water. And if you see behind you, there's some boats out there now coming into the harbour. Uh, a German warship called Schleswig Holstein um, was on a courtesy visit, supposedly, to Poland. And on that morning, it could have been a morning just like this, uh, open fire and that was the beginning of the Second World War. Do you, is there any reason why they opened fire? Did they ever find out? Uh, well, it's, it's all part of the bigger picture of um, Hitler's idea of um, taking over the world, basically. So, um, after the 1st of September here, Britain joined the Second World War, and for nearly six years, Europe and the rest of the world was at war. That must have been awful. Absolutely. Millions upon millions of people killed, cities razed to the ground, people displaced, refugees. But out of that came the Europe that we have now. As we walked along the waterfront and into a wooded area, we came across some more reminders of the war, and it was hard not to feel moved. Right, well, earlier Summer asked us about um, were there any buildings left, and just behind us there's an observation <coughs> tower, and now we've come across a bunker. Um, we've had a look inside, there's nobody still there, but uh, <laughs> you can see, imagine on that morning when they, those uh, shells started hitting, the panic that people were feeling. It's a bit, yeah, it's a bit eerie and creepy around here. Imagine how they felt being inside there when it was all kicking off, like. You can't imagine, I can't imagine, I can't say that I can honestly understand, but I think it was nice. Imagine being up that tall tower as well when they were shooting, like, well, what's our other? Oof. Yeah, they probably just had a rifle and they couldn't fire back. <laughs> Crying.
pull back onto the boat and you can see you now back through the river, Gdansk. Yeah. This part of the approach back into the city via the river boasts a vista of impressive boats and spectacular architecture. It's hard to imagine that just 70 years ago it was all rubble. There are, however, reminders elsewhere. Right, here we are on a little island in the middle of the river. Now this was bombed during the Second World War and it has been left as a reminder of what um, the destruction is. But uh, as we look around, you'll see broken buildings uh, from that time. There is a bit of construction work going on now, so perhaps after 70 or 80 years, um, finally Gdansk is ready to move on and uh, repair some of this damage that's been done. After just walking around and seeing the destruction that was left behind of World War II, I asked, well, I would like to know, did they use the bricks for the original houses to build up um, the houses that they got today? Yeah, sure. I think as much as possible they tried to use the materials that were there and um, build the buildings back as they were. Obviously they needed some more buildings, but if you look carefully on some uh, buildings, they haven't replaced all the fancy work on the front. But it's, it's been painted on by artists to give the impression of how the city looks. But the city we see now is very much as it used to be. It's very heartbreaking actually to see the devastation that was left behind by World War II but it's also a nice relief to know that this city is actually building itself back up brick by brick with whatever was left behind and whatever they don't have they actually done it themselves and some of the buildings are absolutely beautiful. This is one of the buildings that was damaged in the war and as you can tell from the noise it's going to be constructed into this day. The next day we paid a visit to Gdansk shipyard. It was here in August 1980 that Lech Walesa led a revolution to demand democracy and freedom from communism. This 42 metre high monument commemorates those who were massacred during protests which happened in the decade before the revolution. Well here we are outside the museum at the Gdansk shipyard. Um, and I can remember uh, watching a um, film of this place uh, 30 years ago when people were dying here and being attacked by their own armed forces and police who wore cannon and tanks and uh, what they were trying to do is establish a free Poland that was free of communism and where workers and the rest of the population had the rights that we take for granted in Western Europe today and uh, of course the the revolution was successful and eventually led to the breakup of the old communist regime in Eastern Europe and in fact in Russia itself. Inside the Shipyard Museum we found haunting images of the events before, during and after the revolution. The solidarity movement which rose from the revolution contributed greatly to the fall of communism and was vital in terms of shaping the Poland we see today. We decided to take a look around the part of Gdansk known as the Old Town Gdansk is known as the City of Amber and we found beautiful amber shops and stores lining the streets of the Old Town. This 17th century Neptune's Fountain is a symbol of Gdansk's bond with the sea. Local legend has also linked the statue to the creation of Gdansk's famous liqueur, Goldwasser. While walking around the Old Town we were lucky enough to come across a couple in wedding attire and learnt that part of a traditional Polish wedding involves the couple touring their hometown in their wedding outfits after the wedding. Our next stop was the local English language school in Gdansk where our young people would have the chance to ask some important questions. Do you think it's important 
important for Polish people to go out and about their own euro to anybody other culture? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's very important because I I know a lot of people who go for a Erasmus program, for example, and something like that, or um, to job to job uh, um, uh, abroad. Yes, so I think it's very important now. So to to uh, learn uh, another languages. Yes, so yeah, it, it's very important now. Um, I think. Yeah. Do you know much about um, Welsh and British or British culture of young people? Yeah, yeah, I know because uh, I have parents in England. Oh, okay. So, so yes, this is. Uh, um, I I know I know people from there. Yes, so uh, I um, I go there very often. Yes, so. You think it's different compared to the Polish? Yeah, US? yeah, it's different. Uh, like uh, young people. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, uh, young people in uh, Great Britain is more confident than in Poland, so okay. mostly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they they know um, they know their um, good uh, good side of uh, of behavior. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. What do you mean? It's the attitude. Yeah. <laughs> I think Polish people it, Polish people is uh, is not that that confident, and I think um, Polish people is. Um, are less uh, happy yes, uh, oh. daily, so I don't know why, but this is our behavior. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you think of solidarity like before and now? Like, um, I think solidarity for Polish people means really a lot. This is some kind of symbol uh, yeah. which we are proud of, uh, but I think more in the past than than now. Uh, we um, somehow, somehow identify uh, do with. You think, do you think it was more important then? It was. It was definitely more important yeah. than now. <laughs> well, it was a great breakthrough, right? It was something which allowed us to um, get into a new system and yeah. uh, started a new period in in our history. Uh, so it was really something. Um, but now I think we treat it as an element of our history rather than anything which is living now and which is um, somehow influencing uh, our lives. Do you think there's any aspects where it's important now? Or? Um, I think letting our children know that something yeah. like this existed. <laughs> so that's why we have all the museums and okay, yeah. I think it lives in this uh, particular aspect. But not, not really, it, it, it is not something vital for us at the moment. Gdansk is part of a tri-city area along with the cities of Sopot and Gdynia. Our next outing was to Sopot by train to explore the lovely seaside area and meet up with some of our partners from Euracademia. Where is Sopot? And we're about to take a walk on Europe's longest pier. It's about half a kilometre long, so come and join us. Sopot Pier is an impressive 511 metres in length, the longest wooden quay in Europe. It is a beautiful and popular spot to walk, and we came across some interesting people along the way.
here ends in Spa Square, which hosts a range of sporting and cultural events throughout the year. Okay guys, so you said we're on the beach here. We've all seen Clenethley Beach. How does it compare? Nothing. This, this it does one not is compare. 10 days Yeah, ago. I was going to say, this beach is much more beautiful than one in Clenethley. Okay, so Without we're all that. moving to Sopot, are we? Yes. yes. There we go. <laughs> no. After some lunch, we explored Sopot, including the famous Crooked House, before meeting up with some members of our partner group, Euro Academia, at a local pub. What does solidarity mean to us now? Okay. <laughs> Solidarity nowadays, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the concept which is very broad. It's uh, solidarity, I think, mainly with Europe, uh, because uh, now, finally, after so many years, we are a part of Europe. So I think we feel solidar solidarity with the European Union and we feel uh, a part of the European Union. Uh, that's in a very broad European sense, but also solidarity with the poor, sol solidarity with people who are unemployed, solidarity with the less fortunate ones, and so on. I think so, that uh, solidarity uh, is like uh, open, uh, open our head for uh, different tradition, different culture, different uh, countries, uh, for people. We are open. Do you think that religion plays a big part of the people's lives in Poland? Yes, 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 it does. But not as much as it, as it used to. Uh, we were always a, a Catholic country and the Catholic religion played a very important part during the communist uh, times. And uh, our Pope, as we call him, Pope, uh, Pope uh, John Paul II, uh, well, he was, uh, well, he's greatly admired in Poland and a saint now, uh, as you know. Uh, so religion was, in those days, religion was um, a part of our uh, rebellion against the uh, against communism uh, nowadays uh, religion is becoming less and less uh, important for younger people how do you feel about poland being promoted as a tourist destination mm -hmm. uh, i think so much should be done about it because i think we are an undiscovered land uh, poland has got so much potential uh, such a beautiful country and uh, it's still relatively cheap. I think people in Western Europe don't know about it. So a lot has to be done about uh, Poland being promoted as a tourist destination. During the final stage of our trip, we were able to visit the aquarium and board a World War II destroyer in Gdynia and had the wonderful opportunity to visit Gdansk University, where we had the chance to meet young students and take part in a radio show. They came from far away, they have chosen Poland and now they want to make a movie in Gdańsk. Przemysław Toczek, this is Sunday Student and these are my guests. Catherine. Hello. <laughs> Samar. Hello. And Aaron. Hello. Hello. So maybe we'll start with some questions. Yeah. What uh, are your first impressions about Poland? Oh, we love it. It's a very it's pretty city. I yeah. never want Poland. to leave. <laughs> really? You would like to change your country for living in Poland? Definitely. This trip has been part of a 26-week programme of events and activities celebrating community, harmony and integration. Our story does not end here, as we are already making plans to travel to Cork in Ireland and Ogen, Clenetli's twin town in France. You have been watching Tak Polska.